Hi everyone, it's Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook. Today is Tuesday with Tammy, and sometimes Tom's going to be on screen today too. So we've got a couple different things going on in the kitchen today that we are really excited to share with you. It's very chilly here. It definitely feels like fall. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I have the blog Nutmeg Notebook where I show people how to cook on a whole food, plant-based, no oil diet. So it's delicious food, it's really fun, it's super healthy, and we're just excited to be able to share with everyone. So first I'm gonna show you how we like to make hash browns with no oil, but they come out really crispy and crunchy and delicious, and sometimes you just want that little bit of crunch. And I'm also going to be making a soup for you today. And sometimes we like a little something crunchy with the soup, but we're not going to eat a cracker because it's so processed. So guess what? Crispy hash browns are awesome alongside a nice hot bowl of soup. So I have my Cuisine Art Little Griddler, and Tom got this uh, for us at Christmas time, and we've been making hash browns ever since. And they're so good and so easy. So, of course, you're going to need like a George Foreman or a Panini Press or the Cuisine Art Griddler. And what I really like about it is the plates come off and so they can go in the dishwasher or they're just easier to wash in the sink even because they come off, which is really nice. So it has a flat griddle on one side and like grill plates on the other side. So pretty nifty. So we have it preheated and we put it on the grill setting, even though we're using the griddle side, because we wanted to make the top at 425 degrees and the bottom at 400, because the top otherwise doesn't get as crispy as we like. So it's kind of trial and error. And then you need some hash browns. Of course, if you want to cook your own potatoes and shred them, that'd be perfectly great. I'm not doing that. I bought these at Sprouts which is like a health food store. This is um, Cascadian Farm Organic Hash Browns, and the only thing in these are potatoes. So there's no sodium, no nothing added. So we're just gonna get started here, and I'm using the whole package, and this package is 16 ounces. Do you hear that sizzle? It is hot. So we're just gonna get them on here, and part of the trick is to have the griddle hot before you put the potatoes on and that seems to help them from sticking. And then the other trick is to not open it. Let these cook down and don't open it because they'll stick if you open it too soon. So we just kind of want to move them around. Oh look how funny, there was a little piece of shredded carrot in there. That wasn't from me. Now they do have a mix that is sweet potatoes and potato, regular potatoes. And I did try it, but I didn't really like it as well as just regular potatoes. So I'm just trying to kind of even it out a bit here. But you have to be really careful because this is really hot. So I'm just gonna season it a little bit. I have a little bit of granulated garlic. And so I'm going to just sprinkle some of that on. And you don't have to put anything. A lot of times we don't put anything, and we still think they're really delicious. And then I have a little bit of, uh, I have the granulated garlic and the granulated onion. So we're just going to do a little bit of that. And if you wanted, you know, you could use some fresh onion in this as well. And then a little bit of black pepper because I love black pepper. It's great. So we're just going to put that on there. And then we're going to close the lid. And sometimes a couple little pieces will stick out, but that's okay. Just a small casualty. And I'm just going to push it down. And then we're going to let that go for a good, we'll probably check it at 30 minutes. I've got my timer set. In fact, let's change that. Let's do it again. 30. And then we'll start. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a really delicious soup. I'm just watching Tom to make sure he doesn't trip over anything as he backs up. Isn't he doing a great job? Yay, Tom. He's a good cameraman. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make 
the curry ginger butternut squash soup. And this is a recipe, not too close, Tom, because guess what? You have to go to the blog and subscribe to get this recipe. This is one of the exclusive recipes that's only for subscribers. But I want to show you guys how fun and easy it is to make. And I love this soup and I have been getting messages and emails and Facebook messages from people telling me that it has become one of their favorite soups. So when you subscribe to Nutmeg Notebook, the blog, then you get an email thanking you for subscribing and you get a link to the PDF where you can go and you can print the recipe. So if you were already a subscriber when we started doing this, then we had sent out an email to everyone that was already a subscriber and gave you the same link. So if you don't remember getting it, look at your junk email or check, do a search on your email and see if you have it there. Okay, so we're, today we're going to be using our Milthy Multi-Pot, which is a pressure cooker, an electric pressure cooker, and we love it. And later I'm going to be showing you the Milthy Hand Blender, which I absolutely love. It's fantastic. So this is a really easy recipe, like everything just gets dumped in the pot, and I love that. Super, super fun. Okay, we have two pounds of butternut squash. And you know the stores are filled with squash, winter squashes right now, which I love. Now this one I cheated and I went to Costco and bought it already peeled and cubed. It's so easy, but I'm gonna show you um, a peeler that I like when I do have to peel it myself. So this is just gonna go into the pot, like a so, really easy. Put that out of my way there. So that was two pounds of butternut squash. And I'll tell you, sometimes I double this recipe in my eight quart because you know we like to freeze things ahead of time. And so you can make a double batch if you have an eight quart. If you have a six quart, you can just make a single batch. But that's, that's great too. But if you can get an eight quart, I really suggest that you do. Okay, now I have my onions chopped. And I used this little chopper that Chef AJ gave me. And I absolutely love it. And it's a little pole chopper. Let me show you. And you just, it has, it reminds me of a lawnmower and how you just go like this, which is great because you can take it when you travel on a road trip. You can take this with you because you don't need electricity. You could take it camping with you even. So it works really well. I use it when I want my onions chopped up. Now, you don't have to chop up the onions if you don't want to for this recipe because we're going to be blending it at the end. But what I have found when I tell people, you know, to use two large onions, they want to know exactly how many cups that would be because some people like to be very precise with their cooking. So I'll tell you that it's three cups, okay? It's about three cups. So we're just going to go ahead and put all that chopped onion in here. And that's going to cook down and give it a really nice flavor. Adds a lot to the soup. And I love a creamy butternut squash soup. And I also love curry, the flavor of curry. And so this is just super yummy. Okay, so we have that. And then we need a little bit of fresh ginger. So guess what, you guys? And hello, I'm just doing a little computer work while she's cooking. <laughs> I'll be leaving shortly. So I have my fresh, that's Tom, I have my fresh ginger here. And so today I thought, hey, I wonder if the little chopper that goes along with that could chop the ginger. Because you know, ginger is kind of a pain to chop by hand. And guess what? It did a really nice job. I was super impressed. So again, this one just has this, the same lid works on both of these, and it just has that little pole, and I love it. And I use it for garlic all the time, which is great. Oh, you know what? I forgot my garlic. I'm going to need a couple cloves of garlic, too. We were busy getting all this stuff set up, you guys. So I'm just going to get my garlic out so I don't forget that. Okay, so I'm just going to need a little bit of ginger here. So I'm going to measure that out. 
Make sure I have the right amount. And it's gonna go in. Oh, oh, that smells so wonderful. Love it. So those are the little choppers. And those are these are actually made by Tupperware, and they are on Amazon. You can get them. I've got to grab my scissors. Hang on, you guys. So usually I'm more prepared than this. But this is what how things go when you're doing it in real time. So we're going to do three garlic cloves. So I have three garlic cloves here, and those are just going to go in. And, you know, we're going to be blending it at the end, so I really don't have to do anything with those. But I'm going to pop these back in the fridge. All right. So we've got that in there. And also, oh, Tom, can you get me, um, I need three cups of hot water. Okay. Because uh, I wanted to wait, because if you use hot water in here, it'll come up to pressure quicker, which is really nice. So now I have some oats that are going to go in. And then we're going to do apples for sweetness. Just doing some housekeeping here. And I've already washed these apples. And I'm just using the OXO little apple core because it cores it and cuts it all in the same swoosh. So these are going to go in. And I think these were gala apples. Water going. Yeah, it can go ahead and go in. Okay, watch this. Wait, I'm did you get three? Exactly and precisely. No, well, let me see. This the cups are on the side. Oh, you got a little too much. No, this is exactly. Oh, there you three go. Cups. Okay. Why is it? What was on the side? That's metric. Oh, okay. Three cups. Exactly and precisely three cups. <laughs> I'm putting it in. That means I'm a cook, right? There you go. I can pour hot water. Wow. Good job, honey. Okay. Okay, so if here's you can pour the hot second one. You're too funny. Get those seeds out of there. Okay, so then the other apple's gonna go in. And if you just have a core, an apple core, you can just do that too. Because, and you can put the whole apple in, and I've done that sometimes. Um, and that works too, since we're gonna end up blending it. Okay? And I wanted to show you on the ginger, this really easy way of getting the peel off, is you just use a teaspoon. And this is, it's better than using a sharp knife. It's better than using a vegetable peeler. And you just scrape the ginger with the edge of the spoon. And look how that, easy. That's a kitchen hack. Did you have that on your kitchen I don't think list? I did. I did. We did it. We missed that on our kitchen hack episode. I know. Episode. But look at that. It just, it comes off so easily. It's just super fun to do it that way. Okay. You've got kids. Let the kids do it as well. And then I have my seasonings all ready to go in here. And, you know, I learned this trick from Chef AJ that if it's a soup or a recipe that you use all the time, go ahead and set up some empty spice jars and do the seasonings. Do like three or four and then you don't have to get all the spices out So if it, every time. So if it's something that you make every week or every other week, then go ahead while you've got all those spices out and measure them out. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And in the recipe, you'll, you'll find out the quantities. So I'm using local spiceries cinnamon, which is absolutely delicious. I have the um, fair trade, whole foods fair trade turmeric, which is going to add a beautiful color. I like Penzi's hot curry powder. If you don't like it hot, use less. Don't use the hot. Use, use something that's... Um, not as spicy as this, but we like it. And then the fresh nutmeg is from this. And, oh, our light just went out. It got dark in here all of a sudden, huh? I think Tom hit the cord. Did you hit the cord? I hit the cord. Okay, cool. So this is a little nutmeg grinder. So you just take the hard little nutmeg and you put it in there. And it's a microplane. And then you turn it. And you get wonderful, freshly grated nutmeg. And, oh, it smells amazing. That stays there because I'm using that one up like it. Thank you, honey. Okay. So that's it. Super easy. So I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. 
because I want those spices to get down there in the water. And I want that the oats to get down in there. And they're, they just help thicken it a little bit. And I like that they're a little more sweet. And they'll cook and they're going to get blended. So then we're going to put the lid on. Okay. And we're going to make sure that this is set to sealing and not venting. And then we're going to push pressure cook. And we're going to set it for six minutes. So I'm using the minus. And we're going to go to six minutes. And then, you know, it's not going to be done six minutes from now because the pressure has to come up on the pressure cooker. That's telling me that it's getting ready, so it'll start preheating. What I like about the milky is on the front of it, it tells you where it's at in the cycle. So it'll tell me, you know, that it's heating up. And then when it's cooking, it'll tell me that it's cooking. And then when it goes to warm, it will tell me that it has gone to warm. So I just really like that. And Tom's going to take and set it aside because I want to do some other things for you. So with the, the magic of the Nutmeg Notebook Kitchen, we have a pot ready <laughs> to go. It's just like TV. <laughs> So, yeah, but let's put it on that because it is, it's a little bit warm. Well, let's, let's get it, yeah. You pick it up. Put it right here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And then do you want to get a shot of that? And I'm going to get the immersion blender. We'll get this thing going. So I wanted you guys to be able to see the finished product. So before we started, I went ahead and started a batch of it in the six quart so you can see how full it gets in the six quart and that oats cooked in there everything's looking great so I've just got to plug this in and then I'm going to show you how we blend it so the Milty company we are affiliates with the Milty and they sent us their hand blender to try so I, I plugged it in and so it lit up it turned blue so it lets me know that it has power which is really cool now what I like about this it reminds me of the Braun brand that I had years ago do you guys remember the Braun appliances kitchen appliances like we had some of the best stuff that was made by Braun and they quit making things and I used to have an immersion blender made by them that also came with a little mini food processor. And I love this because you can do onions in this. You can make hummus in it. You can, you can make banana ice cream in it. And it, this is super powerful. This has a, they call it a turbo setting, which is super powerful. So you can even put your frozen fruit in here and, and make the frozen like banana ice cream or the fruit sorbet. And then you also get this mixing glass so you can make a smoothie in this. It comes with the whip. And so I'm thinking that with the whip that we would be able to whip up the aquafaba in here. So that would be really cool. So anyway, it's great. I've been using this for about a month now and it's very powerful. I just, I love it. It's great. Okay, so one thing about it is, of course, this attaches here. And then you have the on, and then if you need it to be really powerful, there is the turbo, you can hear that. And then the top part of it, you can ramp up how much power you have. So you wanna start out slow, and then you can use the dial to make it go faster. Okay, so the important thing about using a stick blender or a hand blender is to make sure that you keep it down in the pot. Otherwise, it will splatter and you will get burned. So you wanna keep it down in there. So I'm just gonna get started.
looks pretty good, you guys. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells so amazing. Tom, can you hand me a little plate to just lean this on maybe? Didn't think about everything that I was gonna need before I got started. So it smells amazing. This is gonna be so delicious. So I wanna tell you how I like to serve it. So I have a pretty little bowl here. I got a set of these bowls. A lot of you probably have them from Costco. And I've got a label. And so sometimes I like to put it over a potato. Sometimes I like it over a little bit of wild rice in the bottom of the bowl. That's fun. Or a bunch of arugula or chopped spinach in the bottom is great. And another thing that you can do, which is really fun, is to put it in a mug. And then when you're having company in the winter time, this is like an appetizer. And put it in a mug, and you know how everybody likes to gather in the kitchen? They can all be standing around in the kitchen, and they can be sipping on this wonderful creamy soup. And they won't even need a spoon. So, you know, don't put right in the bottom. But um, it's just a wonderful way to serve it. And then if you want, you can put, I didn't have any fresh chives, but if you have fresh chives, you can just put some fresh chives sprinkled over the top of it. And that would be really pretty. Or the tops of green onions, that would be really pretty as well. So there you have it. This is a delicious wonderful soup for fall. We will be having it all winter long. In fact, I even made it a couple of times over the summer just because we love it so much. And I, I eat soups all year long. I don't know about you guys. So Tom, can you hand me the um, that bowl of butternut squash? Because I want to talk about that. Thank you. And I'm going to unplug this and let you take this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll just move that up there. We'll move the soup over. So if you guys have been out at the market lately, you probably have seen all the amazing squash that are out right now. And these are my favorite winter squashes. So winter squashes are more dense and more sweet than let's say zucchini and yellow squash and the the typical summer squashes that we think of, and they are also starchy, but they're super healthy because they're full of water, they're full of fiber, and they taste amazing, and you can use them in so many different ways. So here is the delicata, and if you go to Trader Joe's right now, Trader Joe's has like the best prices on squash. And the wonderful thing is they're by the piece, not by the pound. So the little ones are the same price as the big ones. So pick up the biggest one that you want because it will be the same price. They're per item. So it's fantastic. So the delicata are really nice. You can eat the skin on these. So, oh, and did I say they have organic right now? They have these in organic, which is great. Now, not the acorn squash. The acorn they didn't have in organic at Trader Joe's, but they had organic kabocha and delicata and butternut. So you can eat the skin on these, which is really nice because then you don't have to peel it. So you just scrub it really good. You cut it in half, take the seeds out, and then you can turn it upside down on some parchment paper or a silpat mat in your oven. I like to roast mine like at 400 degrees and believe it or not, with no oil, no nothing on there, they will caramelize when they're against that um, sheet of parchment paper or on the sill pat and they get a beautiful caramelized brown color to them and they are so amazing. The flavor is incredible. I also like to take these and I like to slice them so that I get rings and then I just take a teaspoon to clean out the seeds that are in the center and the, the little membranes. But then I like to roast those because you get these beautiful little circles that are really, really pretty. So, and that's fun to garnish the top of chili or a lentil soup, something that's really thick, or they're beautiful in salads, or you can just put a platter of those out 
um, on a buffet and everybody loves them that you know they say we eat with our eyes first and these are really really pretty so delicata is what that's called and then of course the humble little acorn squash you know i can remember my mom making these acorn squash when i was a kid and we absolutely loved them they were so delicious and you would get half of one and it was so much fun so here's a hint on what you can do in order to be able to cut these easier and i know like even if you don't have arthritis or carpal tunnel or you know problems using your hands these babies are hard to cut so what i do is i take a short paring knife and you know like my knives are not sitting there okay so i just take a knife that has a, a pointy end and i will just pierce it a few times the squash and i'll do that for this or for the larger kabocha squash and then i put them in the microwave for depending on the size of it like this one i would put in for maybe like two and a half minutes the this kabocha i would do for three if it was a bigger kabocha like a you know an eight pound kabocha this one's maybe like five pounds um, if it was a bigger one then i would do four so it just depends on the size but and, but pierce it first because you don't want it to explode. I did have a spaghetti squash explode in the microwave one time, and boy, was that a mess. Were you home for that? Did you no, miss I it? missed that. You missed that. It was a mess. So anyway, pierce it first, put mm. it in the microwave, and what that does is it just softens it up enough that it makes it easy to cut into it with a knife. So that's my big tip. And then you're able to cut it open and scrape out the seeds, um, if you want, you can roast those seeds. So you can just take and wash those. Our daughter always roasts the seeds from her winter squashes. And, you know, then they're nice and crispy and crunchy and you can do that. So these I like to stuff. These are so fun to stuff. So I like to cut them this way so that I get two pretty halves and then roast them. And while they're roasting, you can be making a stuffing for them. And I have a stuffed acorn squash, two recipes, I believe, on the blog. And we can link to those after we're done with the video. And they're delicious. So one is with, um, it's quinoa and it's curry. I do like curry and garbanzo beans and chopped spinach in it. And if you like dried fruit, you can add some dried fruit to it or you can sprinkle pomegranate seeds over the top of it. I also like to take the chili taco lentils. There's a recipe on the blog. And then also if you have my Mexican Fiesta cooking webinar, you will know that there is a taco lentil recipe in there that you make in the instant pot or any pressure cooker. And I like to take the Mexican lentils and I like to stuff those in the acorn squash after it's been roasted and then put some cheese sauce over the top. And I have Donna's vegan cheese sauce. My friend Donna has a great recipe. She let me put on the blog and put that cheese sauce over the top, a little bit of salsa and some fresh cilantro and green onions. And that is to die for, it's delicious. So you have the hot and spicy of the taco lentils against the sweetness of the acorn squash. And it's just a wonderful balance of flavors. So of course you can do wild rice and apple stuffing. You can uh, do uh, regular brown rice with lentils and any kind of seasonings that you like, like Herbs Day Province, or you could use Italian seasonings. So, you know, you're just limited by your imagination. There is so much you can do. And of course they're delicious, just roasted too and served up. They're so good that way. So love that. The kabocha squash is probably my favorite out of all of these, just because it's, it's dense and it's very filling. I just, I love the texture of it. So again, I like to pierce it with a sharp knife after I've scrubbed it really good, put it in the microwave for maybe three, four minutes. It just depends on how big it is. This one I would do about three. Then when it's soft enough, I will cut it in half and then I will scrape out all of the seeds in the membrane and then I will uh, cut it into wedges. 
and then I'll roast it at 400 or 425. You know, if I, it just depends on what I have going in the oven because I usually try to do a couple things at the same time. And you don't even have to turn it over if you don't want to. I like to let it stay on one side so it'll caramelize and get nice and golden on one side. And I do it on parchment paper or you could use a silpat mat. And then you can do all kinds of wonderful things with it. You can cut it up and is that the griddler beeping at us? You can cut it up and you can um, put it in your salad. So it's wonderful in your chopped salad. It's fun to have different things seasonally to change things up for the taste and the flavor. And it's fantastic that way. We also like to roast it. You can put a little bit of cinnamon on it before you roast it and then a, top a bowl of chili with it. So you put brown rice in the bottom of the bowl, then put your chili on top of that, and then a couple wedges of the roasted kabocha squash with that little bit of cinnamon. So you have a little bit of that sweetness with the savory, and oh my gosh, you guys, it's so good. So I got that idea a few years ago when I was in Nebraska visiting my parents, and my parents live in Lincoln, Nebraska, but in Omaha, Nebraska, um, Isa has a restaurant called Modern Love. And you may know her. She has the Isa Does It cookbook, and she has a restaurant there. So we went there, and we had the vegan chili, and the vegan chili was served that way with big chunks of roasted squash on top. And I thought, what a great idea. Because in Nebraska, they have a tradition of serving chili with cinnamon rolls. Well, I don't eat cinnamon rolls anymore because that's just, you know, too processed and too fattening for me. But to have the squash with the cinnamon and have that roasted, oh my gosh, it is dynamite. You have to try it if you've never tried it. It's so delicious. So I, I like this just as a snack. I like it just like the barbecue mini um, lentil muffin muffins on my blog. If I have those and some mashed potatoes and some green beans and some roasted squash, it's amazing. So love that combination. Of course, you can make Chef AJ's soup. She has a fantastic kabocha soup that you make in the pressure cooker and you don't even have to roast it. You just, you put the whole thing in there whole and cook it. So if you have her cookbook, her, um, Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, the recipe is in there, and that is one of our favorite soups as well, and it's super easy. Everybody loves it. It's so delicious. How you doing over there? I'm doing good. Well, we have a few questions when you're done talking about the squash. I was just, okay. the time is just like less than one minute over yeah, there. Yeah, uh, well, we're, and we'll go over and check those. Okay. So the other one is the butternut squash, which we're using today, and when you do peel it, this type of a vegetable peeler is the kind that I have found does the best job. So uh, the, the kind that go the, the other way that are going this way, they don't do as good of a job as this one. And this one you can kind of, you know, I'll put it down. I'm not going to peel it because I don't need it right now. But you can hold on to it and then peel the long way and you can get this hard outside off. But use this type a vegetable peeler and you can peel this makes it easier then once you get it peeled then cut the bulb the roundy part here cut that because this is where the seeds are they're usually down in here that's the timer and um, and then you can dice this up and then you can scrape out the seeds that are in this part and then dice that up too and you can oven roast it you can use it in soups and stews and it's just it's so delicious of course you can cut it in half so you can pierce it a little bit put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes get it soft so that you can cut it the long way then scrape out the seeds in the membranes turn it upside down on a baking sheet and it's a good idea to use a rimmed baking sheet when you're doing the squashes in case they have a lot of juice these have a lot usually a lot of liquid that comes out of them and put them in a 400 degree oven and let it roast until it is nice and soft. Take it out and it'll probably take about 40 
minutes, maybe 50. It just depends on how big it is and how hot your oven is. And then you can scrape it out with a spoon. You can get it all out. Or there are recipes where you can stuff it too. You can stuff it with rice and different things. So, which is also delicious, but you can um, mash it as well and add a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg. Oh, that is so, so good. So good memories of having this as a kid too, because my mom used to oven roast it and uh, I served it like that to my kids as well. I'm going to go over and check okay, those. Let's check that. Let's Let me... check the hash browns and see how they're doing. I told you we have a lot going on in the kitchen today, but you know, what's fun about the hash browns is just to have that something crunchy, crispy with our soup. So we're going to take a peek here and see what's happening. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's getting there. So let me check this out. Oh, these smell so good, you guys. Oh yeah, this is good. I'm gonna flip it over because I want that. See, even though we had the top set at 425, do you see that the bottom is crispier? So I'm gonna let that go back in. I'm gonna give it like five minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer here and give that another five minutes and then we'll check those. So that'll be fun. Okay, that's the pressure cooker. Told you we have a lot going on. And Tom, that other pressure cooker needs to be shut off because it's still going. Okay, so that's the milthy. So it's telling us that it is done cooking, um, but we're gonna let it come down. The pressure hasn't come down yet. So we're going to let it come down. So that's not, that's not taking too long, actually. That's going pretty fast. Yeah. Because we started that. About. About. 10 after. Yeah, maybe. So, so it'll probably take it. I guess it's going to take a little under an hour mm -hmm. altogether. So that's not bad. But the wonderful thing about the pressure cookers is when they're done, they go to warm. And so your food's not going to burn. It's going to go to warm. It'll keep it at warm until you come and shut it off. So I love that because you can get distracted or you can go do other things and not have to worry about it. Or you can go run an errand even and not have to worry about it. Okay, so you've got some questions? Yeah, I'm catching up with them here. Okay, great. Um, so glad you guys are tuned in today and watching. Okay, lots of hellos from everybody. Thank you. Um, Tammy will check all those out after the video is over. She but goes back and scrolls through. I do. Um, I wanted to uh, catch up with one here from Stephanie. Do you prefer Saigon or Ceylon cinnamon? Oh uh, well, I I like both. But grab that cinnamon and let me. Sh this is this is my favorite from local spicery. This is Saigon. Yeah. So I like this Saigon one from local spicery. It's really sweet. It tastes amazing. I mean, he said that he has people come back and tell him, you know, that must have sugar in it because it's so sweet by itself. And he's like, no, it does not have sugar in it. So these are just so delicious. So local spicery, um, they are in Marysville, California, and they are also in Tiburon, California. They have two stores, but you can also order online. So if you go to like localspicery.com you can order from them and if you put nutmeg notebook in the um, comment section at the checkout they'll send you two little um, samples to try so keep that in mind if you want to order they they are all freshly milled spices we have a video coming out soon we went and visited them a couple of weeks ago and they are the most lovely couple and they have an amazing store and we love their spices. And we have a little tour of that coming up for you. We do. Okay, uh, SB has a question I think here with a smile. How did we live before immersion blenders? <laughs> right, because if you don't have an immersion blender, you have to take all of that hot soup put in a blender. and put it in your blender. And that, you know, that is, it can be done. Yeah. And, but it is tricky. It's tricky business and you have to be so careful. Plus you have to do it in batches. And I also want to say that if you don't want the soup to be completely smooth, you can just blend part of it. If, if you like 
more like substance in there if you want to have something to bite into you don't have to blend it completely smooth we like this one blended completely smooth but then we do like to add you know a little bit of starch to it as well but so a personal preference but yeah immersion blenders are amazing okay um okay amber is asking about i have to look at the fine print here so excuse me uh, can you show us your sheet pan and I think she means Silpat mat. Is it on your Amazon? She needs a couple of each of oh, those. I don't know if it's on the Amazon or not. I'm going to check these hash browns. Hang on a second, guys. I'll jump over to Amazon and see. I think the Silpat mat might be on there, but I better check. I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. Just because I'm afraid that I'm going to forget them since we're on camera and that they'll end up burning and then I'll be really disappointed. So I'm going to shut that off. So you have the OXO uh, 13 by 18 pan on here. Oh, do I? Okay. So I'll grab the Silpat, but here is, can they see the... Um, oh, let me go back to the video. Are these on? I have to go can back to the video. Them? I'm going to assume that you can because I didn't take the feed away. So the Silpats do come in different sizes. Oh, there's my timer. Yeah, they can see the hash browns. They're there. Okay, cool. So this is a Silpat. And the size you need, you'll need to measure your sheet pans to see what size of Silpat you would need. And the nice thing about these is they'll last for years and years and years. Now this one is not Silpat. This one I think is a Martha Stewart one. No, this one is real simple. Oh, that one is a Silpat, but a Martha Stewart one that I got at Macy's. And then this is a real simple brand. And this one's a little bit smaller. So this, this fits like a half sheet size. So they come in different sizes and then um, just depends on what size your sheet pan is, what size you would need. So and you can use these or you can use parchment and paper. Then, and then do you have a favorite sheet pan? You know, I, mine are like ancient. They're really old um, from years ago. We really, we do like the Calphalon. We like the OXO brands. Um, I think that OXO, is that the one that I have for the Breville? Yes, there's two sizes of the OXO that we have on Amazon, yeah. the big one and the little one. So, so this is the OXO, and this one happens to fit in our Breville. And I like these. These are really nice and heavy duty. And I don't even know that my those old ones have a brand on them. They're so yeah. old. Their Silpat mat sizes are all over the place here. So if you just go onto the Nutmeg Nobik shop page and then yeah. search Silpat and then size them to whatever pan size you want to use. So, yeah. can you hear that? The crunch? I can hear the crunch. <laughs> you hear it? I can hear it over here, not through the mic. I know, it's so good you guys. These are so it's crunchy. They could have gone just a little bit longer, but I was afraid I'd get distracted and they would yeah. burn. But it, they are so good. Now, here's another thing that I like to do with them. Can I take another bite? Mm -hmm. mm. They're so good and crunchy. And sometimes I miss that crunch, you know, the crunch of a chip or a cracker or whatever. So you get that with this, which is really nice. And if you have table tasty, you can also, you could sprinkle table tasty over these because that gives it kind of a salty flavor. And that would be really fun too. Now, sometimes I use this as a base for pizza. So, because sometimes I miss pizza and I'm, and I'm gluten free, so I don't have a lot of options, right? For um, a pizza crust, I'm gonna have a bite. And so I will just, I'll take and put my pizza sauce over this. And I just, my daughter um, taught me how to make pizza sauce. I'll just use a can of the fire roasted diced tomatoes. I put that in the little mini chopper like this put it in the mini chopper with one or two cloves of garlic and about a half a teaspoon of oregano and then just pulse it until you get 
the texture that you want. You can make it completely smooth if you prefer completely smooth or you can have it be a little bit chunky. And then I'll, I don't use the whole can on this because it's not big enough, of course, but I'll put that over this and then some of Local Spicery's pepperoni spice. Sprinkle that on there and then load it up with mushrooms and peppers and onions. And I like to saute those in the skillet and then put those over the top and then some faux parmesan on top of that and some Italian seasoning. Awesome. And you know, it, it gives me that flavor of pizza and a little bit of a crunchy crust, which is fun. Okay, any other questions? Are you done cooking? Do you have time for some questions? I do, I'm done cooking. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys today about the hash browns and the soup and the winter squash since winter squash is out. And I do have on the blog, I do have a blog post about kabocha squash. And um, I think I, I tell you on there too, step by step, how I go about doing the um, cutting of it. So when Tom's home, you know, I can say, hey Tom, will you cut this for me? But uh, if he's not home and I have a squash, I, you know, I had to figure out a way that I could do it and not hurt myself in the process. So go ahead. Uh, the question uh, from Jan, do you ever use whole grain pasta? Um, I, I don't, but sometimes I'll, I don't eat it, but sometimes I'll make it for the family. But um, I would say in the last couple of years though, we've all been making all gluten-free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been making all gluten-free. And then you're spiralized because, zucchinis. Because the whole family loves the gluten-free. And so I will make the gluten-free. So there is a, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a, a red lentil pasta. Oh, well, Trader Joe's. We buy the red lentil pasta at Trader Joe's. And then there's a quinoa and rice, brown rice one that we'll buy. And everybody in the family will eat those. And we like those for our granddaughter because there's, you know, it's more nutritious for her than a wheat pasta because at least we're getting lentils or quinoa or brown rice in her. And so we'll make those. Now I make the zucchini noodles usually for me and I love the zucchini noodles. So I have a spiralizer and it takes less than five minutes to make a batch of the zucchini noodles. And I just, if it's just for me, then I just, take them and put them in the microwave and I microwave them for a couple of minutes just to soften them a little bit and then I'll put my uh, Alfredo I have a delicious vegan Alfredo sauce on the blog and I'll pour that over the top of it and sometimes I'll add mushrooms or steamed broccoli and oh fresh basil that's delicious so but yeah I think we've been mostly I think the whole family's just been eating the the um gluten-free pasta for a while now, so. Um, there's a question about whether or not... The pressure just went down on the milfi. Oh, and I forgot to <laughs> mention that for the milfi, if you use our affiliate link and you can uh, use our code, Nutmeg Notebook, and if you have a purchase of $59.95 or more, then you get a discount, off. you get $10 off. So yeah, that wouldn't apply to the hand blend by itself, but if you were getting a crisp plate in a hand blend or a hand blend in a pressure yeah. pot, then the Milky Company work. is also the one they make the crisp lid that turns your pressure cooker into a air fryer, which and is really fun. And we have a video. video, we have a video on that. So, and that's nice if you don't have an air fryer or what happens with us is Tom will be making chips in the Breville and I'll decide I want a sweet potato air fried. And so I'll get out the crisp lid on top of my pressure cooker, my six quart pressure cooker or the eight quart. And I can air fry at the same time that he's making chips in the air fryer in the big one in the Breville. And you can take mm. it on the road with you when you travel. From TS, does the yes. Pierce and microwave trick also work on the butternut squash? Yes, it works on it. It works on all of these. Yeah, just you, but it's in, is important to pierce it a few times, and um, just try you know do a couple minutes at first because just depending on the size of it and if it's not soft enough to get your knife in, put it back in. Do it another minute because you don't want to overdo it because I love the flavor that oven roasting 
gives them. So I, yeah. you don't want to cook it in the microwave. You just want to mm -hmm. soften it a little bit. Um, and then just a quick uh, reply to Hamza Vids. Uh, if you're looking to contact us, you can email Tom at nutmegnotebook.com. Um, let's see. Can we still purchase the Mexican cooking class? Yes. So you go to the blog, nutmegnotebook.com, and you click on shop. And on the shop page, you'll see the Mexican Fiesta cooking webinar. And what that is, is we uh, do cooking classes in our home from time to time. And so people requested that we would videotape it and allow them to purchase it for people who live far away and can't take one of our cooking classes. And so we did that. And I believe there's nine or 10 recipes on there that I show you how to make. I talk about products and show you different things because it was taped right here. We did the, the live cooking show, um, the cooking class live here with like 24 people. And so if they asked questions about products or different things, I was able to pull those out of the drawer or the pantry and talk about them. And all of that is included mm. in that class. Mm. And you, there's a PDF where you can print all the recipes. Yeah, so the so just go to nutmegnotebook.com. I'm I'm scrolling on the feed right now, so I can't jump over and enter that link. I'll do that, I can do that later, but just go straight to nutmegnotebook.com and on click shop. on shop, and then courses may come up, but it, it's right there labeled as, as Mexican Fiesta cooking yeah, class. Yeah, you'll find it. Okay, next question is from uh, Mrs. Smith. Do you guys roast spaghetti squash? Yes. Okay, we do roast it. Okay. Yeah, I just, I, the same thing. I, I don't usually have to pierce that one and microwave it. I can cut that one. It's not that hard. I can cut that one in half, pull the seeds out of the middle of it. Again, just put it on a Silpat lined rimmed baking sheet or parchment paper and oven roast it 400 or 425. You know, you kind of have to see what how your oven works. So, and um, when it's done, you'll know because when you take a fork and run a fork through it, the little strings will start to come off. And that's really good with marinara and some faux parmesan. Delicious. Okay. I, they have those at Trader Joe's right now too. They had organic ones. We were there this morning and they had organic ones. So... Those looked really nice. Nobody's okay. asked why my bowl has holes in it. <laughs> Did you guys notice my bowl has holes in it? It's a leaky bowl. You got a discount on it, I'm sure. Because <laughs> it's got a, there's a song about a bucket and a hole, as I recall yeah, from my childhood. That's funny. Is your name Liza? That's funny. So uh, this is a fruit bowl from Holland Bowl Mill Company. And so they put holes in it because that allows the gases to get out and the air to circulate so your fruit doesn't ripen too quickly. So it's kind of fun. Okay, a couple of questions uh, yes. more here on the end. Um, uh, boy, uh, I'm going to go with uh, KKB Ipswich. Uh, I missed the beginning of the video, but if I cook the butternut squash ahead, could I make the soup in my Vitamix? Do you ever make soups in the Vitamix? I don't own a pressure cooker. Oh, well, sure you could. Sure, you could do that. You could, you'd also have to cook the apples too though. So, cause it has apples in it as well. So you could cook the butternut squash and you could cook the apples. And if you oven roast them, they'll really be delicious. And sure, and then you could, you might have to do it in batches, um, but you could put everything in your Vitamix and run it because it'll and it'll heat up and you'll be able to eat it straight from the Vitamix. That would be delicious. So the onions too. You would need to cook the vegetables first, I think, and all the the onion and the garlic mm -hmm. and everything. You would want to cook that first and yeah. the apples. Kimberly, I just dropped the blog um, web address uh, in the reply underneath your question, so you can copy and paste it from there, uh, or at, on any Google search if you just. Search nutmeg notebook, a Blog. whole a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. is going to come up. Or if you Google yeah. Tammy Kramer, a whole bunch of nutmeg notebook stuff is going to come up. Yes. So, so if um, you go over to the blog at nutmegnotebook.com, there is a subscribe box at it's the gonna, 
pop up if it's your first time. Yes, yeah. it'll pop up if it's your first time. And you just fill in your email address and immediately uh, it will send you an email. And if you don't see it, check your junk mail and make sure that it's not in your junk mail, but it should come to you immediately. And then you will get a link to the PDF for the recipes. And one of the other recipes is a delicious strawberry balsamic dressing with no oil that is fantastic. So, and we have hundreds of recipes on the blog that we have not yet made videos for you guys. So you've got to subscribe and hop over there and see all the recipes that we have. So we're working on it. Eventually we hope to have a video for every recipe. We have a couple of requests. Someone's looking, our Nancy is uh, hoping that someday there will be an apple spice muffin to go with our other muffins. Yes, you know, mm, I've been thinking about that too, about chopping up apples and putting chopped apples in that, uh, the banana quinoa, the, Quinoa banana oat muffins. Yeah. So that should be coming. Okay, I have Nancy, to make up, then cross I, your fingers then, Nancy. I have, to, I have to mix up. I'm, I'm all out of my muffin mix. I've got to mix up some more of those. Okay, and then we, we have someone from UK uh, Hi. Re requesting uh, if you would ever be making some Yorkshire or puddings with gravy. No, uh, probably not. <laughs> Sorry. But it does sound lovely. I had delicious food when I was in England. Uh, I went years ago, my mom and I went. So uh, my great grandma and great grandpa came from England. So the food there was delicious. We got roasted chestnuts on the street in London. And yeah, your relatives are from the Manchester area? Manchester. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and um, I can't think of the, the name that my the name of the town. Preston, I think. Preston, England, I think is where my grandparents my great grandparents were from. So Okay, I think we're caught up with the card. Let me go to the bottom here. Okay, um, so Tom's checking more. So you know, you guys, we love it when you give us ideas about what you would like to see us do or hear us talk about. That's very helpful for us. So you can either leave us a comment here under the video and let us know what you would like us to do in the future. Or you can leave us a message on Facebook. We have a Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page. You can leave us a message there and say, hey, would you consider doing whatever it is you'd like us to do? Or you can email us. You can email me at Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com and you can put in a request for something that you would like for us to do. So, and we, we have some videos in the coffers that we just haven't had time to get around to getting those out yet. We've been busy. You may know if you follow us that we've been teaching Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss class live in person in the Sacramento area. It's a four week class. We've been having a great time. Our last class is coming up this Saturday, but we will be having another class starting in January and uh, registration for that will start November 1st. So but I think we have like six or seven people already that for January. are ready to sign yeah. up for January. De Debbie's putting in a, a plug for Thanksgiving recipes on a future Okay. Up well, you know, I think, I think we will we'll talk about that. Um, maybe we'll talk about that next week. We'll have to see. So I know a lot of people are concerned about what to make for uh, the holidays. So we'll try to address that with you too. It's really not that scary. So there's so many things that you can make. And, you know, so many of the foods for Thanksgiving are the foods that we eat on a whole food plant-based diet. You just need to you know, make them in a little bit healthier way. So it's pretty easy. Okay. I think okay, we're all caught it. up. Our hour right. is up. So, so this is what, wrap up. this is what we'll be having tonight. We have the hash browns and we have the curry butternut squash soup that we'll be having. And we love those, to have those hash browns instead of bread or crackers. It gives you that crunch and it's really fun. So we really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching today. It was a lot of fun for us. And, you know, it really feels like fall here. It was 44 degrees this morning when we went out for our morning walk. And it, and the temperature dropped. It was 43 yeah. when we got back.
So it's certainly feeling like fall here. Yeah. And any time in the future when you guys are hearing that echoey sound when Tammy's talking and I'm not over here, uh, I can see your message on the back side of this phone, then that might prompt me to like plug in the little adapter that I did when the sound got a lot better. So oh, did you forget? I had all the mics set up, but I didn't have the little adapter plugged oh, in. Oh, thank you guys for alerting us. That's so, so good. That way the whole video well, I, I wasn't actually, ruined. I actually spotted it. And then you when did? I plugged it in, everybody went, wow, now the sound is good. Okay, so sorry good. about that. Um, it was on my checklist, but we were getting started a little, like two minutes late, and I was rushing. We so. were rushing, we ha and we had so many different things going at the same time. And it's a little nerve-wracking to cook live because if something goes wrong, there's it goes wrong, <laughs> <laughs> and there isn't anything you can do about it. If something, you know, if we're taping it and he can edit it, then it's okay because we can always start over or make a correction. But so it's just, it's a little more, makes us a little more nervous when we're doing cooking segments live, but, but it's fun too. So anyway, thanks so much you guys for joining in. We really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to Nutmeg Notebook, please jump over to nutmegnotebook.com and be a subscriber and get your two exclusive recipes. And if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please subscribe. And then that bell icon that's next to the subscribe, if you click on that, every time we go live or we have a new video up, you'll get a, a notification of that so that you won't miss it. And we try to do Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So just keep that in mind. And if we're going to miss a day, a Tuesday, or have to change the time, we usually post that over on our Facebook page at Nutmeg Notebook on Facebook. We also have an Instagram account. Of course, it's Nutmeg Notebook. And over there, I post a lot of what I ate in the day or what we're cooking or what we've been finding in the stores. So check that out too if you happen to have an Instagram account. We really appreciate you watching today. Thank you so much. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. time. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Bye-bye. See you next week.